In today's video, sparks are gonna fly as we dive into the best-selling plasma cutter on Amazon. But can it actually live up to the hype? Stick around and we'll put it to the test together and see if this plasma cutter earns a place in the shop. All right, guys, so this is a plasma cutter by a company called Bestark. They reached out to me and they said they wanted to send me their newest plasma cutter. It's the seventh generation. It is the BTC 500 DP. Only it really must be the best selling plasma cutter on Amazon because I couldn't get the seventh generation one. They sent me the third gen because they're completely sold out of the seventh generation. From what I understand, it's essentially the same machine. It's just that the display is a little bit different on this one. The new one has an all digital display. This one still has a dial for the air pressure, I believe. As far as I know, that's the only difference. So. Without further ado and too much nonsense, let's crack into this thing and check it out. So a little disclaimer about me guys, I will not do a product review on something just because someone sent it to us and tell you that it's good if I don't think it's good. That's against my religion. So if this thing is terrible, I'm gonna tell you it's terrible. If I think it's good, I'll tell you it's good because I don't care and that's how we do. Certainly packed in there pretty well. All right, so we got a box here, which I'm assuming is gonna be a torch. Yep, so it's our ground lead. Pigtail adapter from 240 to 110 or 220, whatever you guys wanna call it, 120. Got an air hose. Torch itself and the obligatory instructions. And of course, for the unit itself. So let's go over this thing together. Looks like we've got our air regular on the front of this unit. We've got our air pressure gauge here. And that's kind of what I was talking about on the newer machines, the seventh generation one. I think that this display is just digital, almost like our amperage display here. Moving over to that, obviously this is our amperage controller. It will show us our amperage here when we turn it on. Got some uh, LEDs here, fan, work when it's actually working. OC, overcurrent, I'm guessing that stands for. Uh, you can select between 110 and 220 volt, but I believe that's automatic. It just senses the voltage coming into it, whether you're plugged into a 110 outlet or a 220. You've got your standard dense connector here for your ground or work lead. This I really like. This is a pilot arc machine, meaning that there is a lead that gets grounded out on the torch that gets attached right here. Pilot arc just means that when you pull the trigger, it initiates the arc and you don't have to make contact with the workpiece to start cutting. We've got our little control input here for our torch and the actual torch input itself. You've got an air or a cut LED here controlled by this button. Basically, all that means is that if you have it on the air setting, you can check to make sure that you have air coming through the torch. When you put it on cut, obviously you're set to cut. You have 2T, 4T, and PT on this control down here. 2T means that when you press the trigger, you have your electrode of superheated gas coming out. You let go, it turns off. 4T, you press the trigger once, you have your superheated gas coming out, and it stays coming out. Um, until you pull the trigger again and let go. PT is for post flow, meaning the amount of air you have coming out after you let go of the trigger. Looking at the back, we've got our air chuck here, which I really like, just a standard air chuck fitting. You can go right on there with a quick coupler that you would use for your air tools in the shop. And there is an integral water separator here that you can drain any water out the line, which is really important on a plasma cutter, guys. You don't want water. Uh, they don't play nice with it. So if you see any water in here, you always wanna drain that out. On off switch, you have your thermal protection fan there. And I like that they enshrouded the water separator in this metal casing right here so it doesn't get bumped since it's either glass or plastic or whatever that is. They give you a fairly decent gauge on the power cord here. I'm guessing this is 12 gauge. Let's see if I can see it written anywhere on the cable. I do not, but I'm guessing by the looks of it, it's 12 gauge. I'd like to see 10, but this is pretty common on machines at this price point. All right, talk is cheap. Let's hook it up and see if it works. We have our own air hose here at the shop, so we're not gonna be using any of that. Hook up our work lead, our ground. As for our torch, this gets connected here. Control gets connected here. It can only go in one way. 
then for our pilot arc connection this is a ring and post terminal type connection once you're all hooked up here that's what your connection should look like Got our air hose hooked up here and I always have on my air hoses a second water separator just right at the nozzle. I guess to give you a very basic and easy to understand chart, your first column is for 220 and your second column is for 110. We're using 220 today so we're going to be on this one. Basically it just tells you for what material, the thickness that you're cutting, what the air pressure should be and how many amps. That's it. So if you're cutting 5 millimeter material, 6, 10, 12, etc. You just go and set your amps and your PSI according to the thickness of the material that you're cutting. So the only thing that maybe is challenging to some people is that this is in metric. So if you're here in the States, it might be a little bit confusing to you, but it's not that big of a deal. Just to translate real quick, five millimeters is going to be your three sixteenths. Six millimeters is going to jump up to your one quarter. 10 is going to jump up to your three eighths material. And then over here, we're going to have your half inch. What we'll do is we'll cut some stuff a little bit thinner, hopefully. I think I have some one eighth and uh, maybe even some finished stuff laying around. We'll see how it does with no settings or um, turning it down manually. We'll see how low it goes and see if we can cut some thinner stuff with it. So we are gonna stay on 2T. Let's adjust our post flow. It's on three seconds. I like that five or six. Again, post flow just sets the amount of time that air flows after you're done cutting and it cools the nozzle down a little bit. Air pressure came preset to 60 PSI. The thinner stuff calls for 50 as a max PSI. So let's go down a little bit. Just a super simple machine to operate and get dialed in, guys. All right, let's see if we actually have an arc. We are ready to start cutting. All right, we're going to start with some kind of out of the ordinary stuff from here in the shop. This is some really, really thin aluminum. I can bend it with my hand. I'm not even sure what gauge that is. Maybe 22 or, you know, I'm not sure what it is. It's really paper thin stuff, though. So let's turn this plasma cutter down to 15 amps, which is probably even then too much, and see what it does. Flip it over and see. Hardly any dross on that. That's nice. Let's take a little bit of a longer cut on a straight line and see if that creates a little bit more dross in the back. So hardly any on the piece that we cut. I don't know if you guys can pick it up in the camera or not. A little tiny bit on the work piece. Not too bad, not too bad. I went kind of slow on that admittedly though, so. Let's get rid of this really thin aluminum, get some steel up here. Maybe some thicker aluminum, let's try that. All right, so we've got some 16 gauge angle iron here. This is aluminum. It's gonna be a little bit weird cutting this because it's beach right here. But I guess we'll start on the outside, work our way in, and cut back and see how that works out. bit more dross on that, not too much. Knocks right off. Knocks right off the bottom. Okay, 16 gauge aluminum cut. All right guys, here's some dirty 1 8 flat stock that I have laying around. It's a good test for me because I use 1 8 a lot here in the shop. Pretty good. A little bit of dross in the back of it. I can feel a little bit back there. Knocks right off. Knock right off of that cut piece with just one pull of the pliers. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's nice and clean. All right, I'll take the 1 8 away. All right, so we're going to try a piece of 316 now. I have a machine set to 35 amps. 
60 PSI. Well, let's see how that looks. Comes right off the pliers. Okay, super clean cut on that one, except for my screw up there at the end. I'm not sure we could ask for better than that, other than a CNC plasma table. Let's move on to the quarter inch stuff. At 30 amps, staying at 55 PSI. That went right through easily. It was just hanging on by a piece of that dross in the back of it. I don't know if you guys watched me when I cut that, or you can see what happened here on the camera. But right here towards the end, I kind of slowed down a little bit and uh, the dross just kind of melted back on, which is what made it kind of still hang on there by a thread. So I just kind of moved it with my hand and it fell off. But use your error. I slowed down a little bit too much at the end. Let's try it again, another piece of quarter. Okay, that's a lot nicer. Draw us all came off the back side of it. Let's do one more piece on that quarter inch with these settings. I just want to try something. So interesting, I bumped up the amperage a little bit and on that piece I got hardly any dross on the cut piece. I bumped up the amperage on that to 35 and we're at still at 55 PSI. So guys, check this out, it's pretty remarkable. I don't have any 3 8 in this shop. I thought I did. I don't have any half inch, so what I did is I took a piece of quarter inch, stuck it on top of a piece of 3 16 and cut, and what a really nice clean cut I got. There is zero dross on the bottom of it, zero on the top. Really, really impressed with that. What I did to obtain that is max out the machine at its 50 amp setting, 60 PSI. We got a really clean cut stack in that quarter inch and three sixteenths. So midway through the settings that I'm finding that work out the best are slightly different than what's in the book. So I'm writing everything down over there. So at the end of this, we'll go over everything that I've written down with the little pieces of metal that I got cut and we'll see what works best. All right guys, since we don't have any half inch, I went ahead and cut this piece of quarter inch in half and stacked it, making a half inch piece there. Let's see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and max out the machine all the way to 50 amps at 60 PSI. Let's see what happens. Draws hanging off there on the back. Seems to be coming off, no problem though. One piece. Guys, that looks like a pretty clean cut, I gotta tell you. Here is the cut end, just a little tiny piece of draw. Take a look at that. Alright, guys, so lots to go over. First off, the torch. So as you guys can see, um, it did not chew up the consumables all that much at all. There's a little bit of char, which is to be expected on the cup right there, but that's for obvious reasons. But the actual nozzle, um, I don't see any cuts in those kerf lines or anything like that. It's just, it's still looking pretty good. This is kind of a silly thing to me, but the ground lead, the cord on it is actually nice and soft and flexible. One thing I hate is when you get kind of cheap cords and they're real crunchy and they just kind of retain the shape that they came packed in or they're you know, kind of fold it up in a line like that. Um, this is really nice, soft and supple, and it lays out really nice. So just a pet peeve of mine when they're not, and I really appreciate that this one is nice and soft. All right, so here's something that's a big deal to me in a shop where I don't have that much space to move around. Uh, we got just about six inches. We'll take it from the bumpers here. We'll call it six and a half inches in width, 13 and a half in length, 
and just about 10 in height. So a real small compact unit, which is very important to me here. And the weight on this thing, man, that is super light. I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe 15 pounds, if that. It is an AG60P Pilot Arc Torch, so consumables are readily available for that online or wherever you may search for them. I'm not gonna have to hunt all over the place. That's also a good feature. So I went ahead and jotted down my settings on the pieces of material that I cut that worked best for me. Um, they all seem to have one thing in common, which is that my settings tend to be a bit higher than what they recommend in the manual. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that my way is the right way and their way is wrong. Likely what's gonna happen is if you get this machine, you're gonna have your own settings that work. So it's kind of nice to have their settings and then mine as well so that you have a guideline um, to really get tuned into what you might like. These will vary a lot and the reason why mine are different from the manual is because your travel speed is different from whoever tested this, right? I'm not cutting as fast or slow as they did, so my settings are a little bit different and the same thing will happen with you. But they're pretty close and they're in the ballpark. In summary guys, what kind of review is it if you don't critique it as much as you can as well as compliment the things that you do like? So. What do I like? I like the size of it a lot. It's very compact and it's going to have a really good idea for this thing going forward. Um, I'm combining it with a small welding machine that I have on a small cart and kind of making that a portable rig to move around the shop versus being in a stationary spot. So I definitely think it has earned a spot in our shop on that alone. The other thing I really, really like, it is stupid simple and like really user friendly to operate in terms of the controls and um, you just, you don't need a, a degree to work this thing. If you're at all hesitant about plasma cutting, don't be hesitant. It's stupid simple. Um, it's dummy proof. It's idiot proof. You can do this. And these controls and the way everything's laid out make it super simple. Torch was nice and ergonomic. Felt good in my hand. Um, well balanced. No problems with that. Cut. The machine cut just fine. Um, I had no problem with how it was able to cut. I didn't feel it was incapable of cutting. Uh, when we started stacking up the two quarter inch pieces and it cut through the half inch, it was fine. I didn't have any issue with that. Now critiquing it, I can't say there's something specifically that I really don't like about it, but what I can say is that in the future, I'd like to see a 60 amp version from them maybe, and then possibly a little bit of a thicker cord, like a 10 gauge cord on the back of it. Um, I know it's kind of nitpicking and I know you guys are, you know, there's kind of this morbid thing that we all like to do when we hear reviews and we like to hear people like really tear something apart. Um, that's not going to happen. I, the machine did what I think it was supposed to do. I didn't have any complaints with it. Obviously longevity. We don't really know how well it performs in the long term because this is their first time using it. I would like to get my hands on the seventh generation one that has the digital readout for the PSI. Although I expect performance to be just about the same because it's just changing a feature of the machine, not anything to do with the performance of the machine. If any of you guys have ever cut with a 50 amp plasma cutter versus a 60 amp plasma cutter, I can't really articulate it in words, but there's a slight difference um, and just the overall feel when you're cutting with that torch, you, you, it kind of feels like it has more power when you're cutting with 60 amps. Um, and that's something that I kind of got used to on another machine that I have back there. So um, I would like to see a 60 amp version in the future, not a deal breaker. This cut through half inch just fine. So I don't think it's, you know, if they decide they want to stick with 50 amp machines, not a big deal. This is just me nitpicking because I got to critique something and um, I don't think it's fair to do a review and not be completely honest about everything that you think. So um, that's my thoughts. Guys, if you found this video helpful today, I really hope you'll hit that like button. It's the best thing you can do for my channel. Um, it really tells YouTube that we're trying hard, we're doing a good job, and it helps them promote our videos. And aside from that, I personally really appreciate it because I do work hard to make these videos for you guys. If you want to see more of our 55 Chevy truck getting built, please like, comment, and make sure you subscribe and click that little bell notification so that you get notified whenever we upload a new video in the 55 Chevy truck build series. I want to thank Best Art for providing this with me today. I look forward to working with them. Uh, hopefully we'll get to try their seventh generation machine at a later date and see if there's any difference in that. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.